good morning friends welcome again so in continuation with our previous learning video today also we will cover icit infodi guideline 23c so we will walk over the guideline we will understand the recommendation so be with me for some time so that's why we will become true with this guideline so let's start so this guideline is currently updated 22 april 2021 so as we discussed earlier also in uh, different uh, guideline of the icc 23 so impurities organic impurity inorganic impurity and residual solvents so residual solvent part covered in this q3c as we know various solvents are used in the pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing of drug substances and drug products so the recommendation for the using those solvents the based on its toxicological acceptability so that uh, it will be that so that the trace amount which will remain in the drug product should be safe for the patient so that all part is discussed in this guideline so uh, residual solvent may be present in the drug substance may be present in the excipient used to manufacture the drug product or may be present in the drug product because of the manufacturing process use the residual solvents so if the manufacturing process use the residual solvent to produce the drug product then uh, uh, the drug product should be tested for that particular residual solvent so these all uh, residual solvent present in the drug substance in the excipient in the drug product all covers under the scope of this guideline so uh, cumulative method is also proposed because uh, a drug product have excipients have drug substance have manufacturing process or so cumulative method to calculate the residual solvent in the drug product is also proposed under the scope of this guideline so friends uh, solvents in this guideline classified into three classes class 1 solvent solvent to be avoided class 2 solvent solvent to be limited class 3 solvent solvent with low toxic potential or you can say solvent may be used in the drug substance or drug product manufacturing so class 1 solvent should uh, solvent should uh, to be avoided so this solvent to be avoided uh, uh, to use in the pharmaceutical products class 2 solvent solvent to be limited so this solvent are if necessary only then you have to use those those solvent so those are the class 2 solvent class 3 solvent with low toxic potential you can this you can use this uh, solvent so for class 3 solvent generally the pde is considered as 50 mg or more per day so uh, they, they, based on the toxicological potential this classification is made so what pde is used pde is the permitted daily exposure uh, it is defined in the present guideline as a pharmaceutically acceptable intake of residual solvents to avoid confusion of different values of area of the same substance so tdi tolerable daily intake it is used in the ipcs tdi acceptable daily intake it is used by the who so for this guideline pde is used so that uh, so that to avoid any confusion so based on the pde value based on the toxicological potential of the solvent uh, solvent classified into the three classes class 1 class 2 class 3 okay so friends uh, class 2 solvent limit so two options are provided in the guideline to calculate the limit of the class 2 solvent so this is the most important part so uh, let's uh, we understand so class 2 solvent limit there are two option given in the guideline to calculate the class 2 solvent limit class 2 solvent limit so this is the equation so concentration in ppm equal to 1000 into pd divided by dose dose means maximum daily dose okay pd uh, permitted daily exposure of that particular uh, solvent okay so uh, in option 1 we consider maximum daily dose as 10 g so we calculate limit in for the maximum daily dose of 10 g so uh, if all excipient in drug substance in the formulation meet the limit as per option 1 i mean as per 10 g maximum daily dose then this component may be used in any proportion no further calculation is required till maximum daily dose remains uh, less than 10 g in but it, it will not uh, every time this case will be not there means every time the excipient and drug word cannot uh, it is not possible to comply with the option 1 limit so in that case uh, option 2 we can apply in option 2 we we consider exact maximum daily dose okay so we will learn by example in the next slide so let's understand option 2 limit calculation based on an example so option 2 may be applied by adding the amount of residual solvent present in each of the component of the drug products the sum of amounts of solvents per day should be less than that given by the pde 
For example, acetone natural is considered as one of the residual solvent. PD is considered as 4.0 mg per day. So uh, we know for option one, we can calculate the uh, limit by considering 10 gram maximum daily dose. So 1000 into 4.1 divided by 10 gram. So 410 ppm will be the uh, limit as per option one. Consider example a drug product having uh, 5 gram maximum daily dose. Uh, it it come. Uh, uh, its ingredient is drug substance uh, having 0.3 gram uh, composition, excipient 1.9 gram, excipient 2, 3.8 gram. This is the amount of uh, amount, amount in the formulation, right? So uh, the residual solvent of, of uh, the acetonitrile in the drug substance is 800 ppm. Uh, in excipient 1, it is 400 ppm. In excipient 2, it is 800 ppm. So limit as per option 1 is 410 ppm. So this is uh, drug substance is not complying as per option one. Excipient one is complying as per option one. Um, excipient two is not complying as per option one. So what about drug product? So for drug product, we will uh, calculate the PD uh, PD uh, for, for each component. So uh, to, uh, to calculate the uh, daily exposure of acetonitrile, we can use this equation also. PPM we know 800 multiplied by dose we know 0.3 gram divided by 1000. So 800, 800 multiplied by dose, that is how much? 0.3 gram divided by uh, 1000. So it is 0.24 mg, right? So a similar way it is 0.36 mg, similar way excipient 2 is 3.04 mg. If you make the summation, it will be 3.64 mg, right? Um, so uh, the PD for the astronautal is 4.1 mg, but duct product giving exposure of 3.64 mg. So it is well within the limit. So the drug product is complying as per option two limit. So friends, let's consider one, uh, one more uh, example. So in this case also, maximum daily dose of drug product is five gram. And uh, the drug product consists of drug substance and two excipients. So the, the amount of the drug substance is 0.3 gram. Excipient one is 0.9 gram. Excipient two is 3.8 gram, okay. So acetonitrile uh, content 800 ppm, 2000 ppm, 800 ppm. Okay. So all of these are not complying as per option one. So let uh, check for the for the drug product. Let's check for the option two. So for option two, we'll consider we'll calculate amount of uh, acetonitrile get exposed by taking this drug uh, exposure of acetonitrile for each um, uh, each uh, compo each component of the drug product. So for drug substance, it will be 0.24 mg calculated. 800 multiplied by 0.3 gram divided by 1000 for excipient 1 it will be 1.8 calculated by 2000 multiplied by 0.9 divided by 1000 and for excipient 2 it will be 3.04 calculated similarly uh, 800 multiplied by 3.8 divided by 1000 if we make a summation of all these uh, components it will be it will come around 5.08 so 5.08 we know the pd of acetonitrile is 4.1 mg per day so it is uh, more than the 4.1 mg per day. So this drug product will not comply as per um, option one as well as as per option two also it is not complying. So uh, for this case, some way forward is proposed, but the best way is to reduce the residual solvent and to come make it comply at, uh, at least as per option two. So uh, the way forward are the manufacturer could test and uh, test the drug product to determine if the formulation process reduce the level of acetonitrile. This is the 5.08 mg. This is the calculated value. So uh, we can uh, check actual value of the acetonitrile in the formulation. If the level of acetonitrile was not reduced during formulation to the allowed limit, then the manufacturer of the drug product should take other steps to reduce the amount of the acetonitrile in the drug product. If all attempts fail, in exceptional cases, attempts uh, uh, in exceptional cases, attempted steps and risk benefit analysis can be provided. So this is the case um, is in actual the solvent is reducing or not reducing that we can check we can check some ex additional uh, uh, additional manufacturing process steps to reduce the solvent uh, so ultimately our main aim will be to make the solvent remaining in the drug product to, to the safe levels okay so just one fact i want to share that uh, uh, we know uh, that uh, for uh, removing residual solvent we put a drying method we dry our uh, ganules or whatever it is. So, but uh, sometimes what we did, we directly give the temperature. But uh, because of temperature, some channels create and the residual solvent uh, become trapped in the ganules. So, to avoid that, first give a air drying and then give temperature. 
so this is the learning from the process part so let's go to the next slide so regarding the reporting of the residual solvent guideline recommended as follows uh, that uh, only class 3 solvent are likely to be present loss on drying is less than 0.5 percent means uh, class 3 solvents are relatively uh, safe so if only class 3 solvents are present then the lod can be reported less than 0.5 percent uh, only class 2 solvent x5 are likely to be present all are below the option 1 limit here the supplier would name the class 2 solvent uh, represented by x5 so in declaration uh, <coughs> the supplier should mention uh, which class 2 solvent are present only class 2 solvent and class 3 solvent are likely to be present residual class 2 solvent are below the option 1 limit and residual uh, class 3 solvent are below 0.5 percent so if uh, class 2 and class 3 both solvent are present then it will be presented like this if class 1 solvent are likely to be present they should be identified and quantified class 1 should be avoided so if they are also present so uh, they will be identified and quantified properly so likely to present refers to the solvent used in the final manufacturing step and to solvent that are used in earlier manufacturing step and not removed consistently by a validated process so uh, uh, this is the likely to present meaning uh, if solvent of class 2 or class 3 are present at greater than the option 1 limit or uh, 0.5% lod they should be identified and quantified so these are the general guidelines for reporting the residual solvent uh, as a thumb rule if you are using the solvent in the process you should identify and quantify it and uh, you should be based on the class of the solvent you should comply the limit as per um, as proposed by the guideline some examples of the solvents are here uh, so class 1 solvent solvent to be avoided uh, so these are uh, example benzene carbon tetrachloride these are example of the class 1 solvent some recent updates are also uh, happened so we will discuss in the further slide so what new solvents are added okay uh, this is the list of the class 2 solvent which will be limited so pd is provided and their concentration is provided so pds are given to the nearest 0.1 mg per day uh, and concentration are given the nearest 10 ppm so these are rounded up to make a, a round of values so this is the class 2 solvent list you can go through it from the guideline so for class 3 solvent as we know class 3 solvent are low toxic potential so for them pd less than 50 mg per day or uh, 50 mg per day is proposed so it will come around 5000 ppm so generally use solvent like ipa isopropyl alcohol acetone falls in the uh, class 3 solvent so you can go through this list also one more class is there uh, that solvents for which no adequate to uh, toxicological data found so these are the some solvent list uh, for which no adequate toxicological data found if you are using this solvent so you have to provide uh, that uh, safety data to, uh, to to justify the limit in which it is remaining in the drug product order substance so friends in brief we have a look uh, how to calculate the pd so general generally a uh, third party external validation required so but uh, in the guideline pd calculated by the formula noel uh, multiplied by weight adjustment divided by constant f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 noel no observed effect level or LOEL uh, lowest observed effect level if NOEL value is not available then you can use the LOEL uh, value this is the formula for the PD calculation so uh, just for example as we seen the example of the acetone trial now for, so for that how the PD calculated uh, for example uh, <clears throat> the formula is this so NOEL NOEL from a reported uh, from a reported study uh, from toxicity study of acetone in mice, uh, the NOL uh, was observed 50.7 mg per kg. So NOL we place there 50.7. So then weight adjustment generally 50 kg weight considered for adult. Generally 60 and 70 kg considered. To, but to get the worst case PD, we consider 50 kg weight. Then a constant F1, F1. So this study is on the mice. So, so F1 will be uh, uh, 12, right? It is for the mice to human. It is will be 12. Then F2, F2 will be 10, which is considered to uh, remove the variability. Then F3, F3 is considered as a 5 because it's a 3 month study. So then uh, F4, F5. So F4, F5, 1 month consider. So as a justification, right? So F4, F5, uh, 1 consider based on the fetal and maternal toxicity. And F5, a variability factor uh, because uh, we, we have used the uh, NOEL, so it is considered as a 1. So based on that, the value will come around 4.22 mg per day. So this is the in brief uh, how to calculate the PD value. Dear friends, in the recent uh, some solvent 
class is updated so for uh, tetrahydrofuran earlier it was in the class 3 uh, constituting pd 121 mg that is more than 50 mg per day but now based on the revised study it is uh, it, it 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 will fall in the class 2 solvent because pd considers uh, pd uh, based on the study pd calculated 7.2 mg per day and methyl pyloron is added as a class 2 solvent mean earlier it was in class 3 now it is in class 2 uh, triethylamine it, it is in class 3 only methyl isobutyl ketone it is in the class 2 earlier it was in the class 3 2 methyl tetrahydrofuran it is in the class 3 cyclopentyl methyl ether it is class 2 uh, tertiary butyl alcohol it is class 2 so you have a note of this you should have a note of this thanks friend uh, thanks a lot uh, within 15 minutes we covered this guideline so uh, what i suggest to my juniors also and so same i want to uh, say here also if we give uh, one hour daily uh, to our uh, upskilling then it will it will boost up our confidence and it will be helpful for us uh, in the long term and confidence matters so always give one hour before sleeping or uh, in morning can give you can spend at least one hour to your learning so uh, together if you'll do so we can improve quality of our knowledge uh, and we can contribute somehow in this uh, noble cause if you like the video please uh, uh, subscribe my channel and share uh, wherever possible thanks a lot thanks for your time